an ozone hole developed over Antarctica because of the use of chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, which break down in the upper atmosphere and decompose the ozone. A Waikato University chemistry lecturer, Joe Lane, says back in the 80s, restrictions were placed on ozone-depleting substances. Those restrictions have finally started to take effect, and what we're now seeing is that the ozone layer is recovering, that that hole is getting smaller over Antarctica, and hopefully should uh, a long-term result in reduced uh, incidence of, of things like melanoma and skin cancer, sunburn and, and the like in New Zealand. An atmosphere and climate principles scientist at NIWA, Olaf Morgenstern, says New Zealand is the world leader in terms of certain types of skin cancer, because many people are of European extraction and are genetically programmed for much lower levels of UV. Ozone recovery will contribute to an ever so subtle increase in ozone in this country, but it's not going to be large and it's not going to change the outlook that, you know, people of a fair skin, like myself, for example, have to be careful when going out in summer, essentially. CFCs are found in common household items like older refrigerators, old car air conditioning systems, as well as industrial air and refrigeration systems. They also used to be in everyday products like aerosols. But in 1987, almost every country in the world signed the Montreal Protocol in a concerted effort to ban the use of CFCs and repair the ozone hole. Dr Morgan Stern says if these restrictions hadn't been put in place, then the world would be on the path to a major catastrophe. He says we should try to learn from this success to tackle climate change, although it's a harder problem. We can look at the Montreal Protocol and ask ourselves what caused it to be so successful. And partially it was so successful because... Those companies that made those CFCs saw money in the alternatives. And, you know, maybe that could be a way to, you know, to go in terms of how to phase out our usage of fossil fuels. Yesterday, the Ministry for the Environment released its latest climate change projections for the coming decades. Drought severity is projected to increase in most regions, with hotter temperatures in the North Island and more intense winter rainfalls increasing the likelihood of flash flooding and overwhelming urban drainage systems. Among the likely impacts is an increase in summer mortality rates, business disruption, damage to biodiversity and transport infrastructure. Victoria University climate scientist James Renwick says ozone depletion is a much easier problem to tackle because the gases causing the problem were used in a narrow range of products and there were convenient substitutes for them, unlike in climate change. With greenhouse gases and climate change, the gases come from activities that are at the core of the global economy, you know, energy production, transport and so on. And finding substitutes like switching to renewable electricity for electric vehicles and all that, quite a lot harder. So it's taking a lot longer, it's a lot more complicated. Dr Renwick says it could take hundreds of years to deal with climate change and we need to start responding now because the time delays are huge and we dally at our peril. For Checkpoint, Kate Gutzel.